So how do you buy an expensive car for cheap? And when I'm talking about expensive, I mean the higher end Mercedes, Lexuses, the Audis that you see, usually really wealthy people or businessmen driving on the streets. Well, over the past four years, I've been switching cars a lot, sometimes once or even twice a year. So I decided to put together this video to show you the whole financial aspect of it so that you can get a great deal as well and drive higher end cars for a cheaper price. So first things first that you gotta look at is if you're paying cash for the car or if you're gonna be financing. On the finance side obviously you're gonna have to look at your credit and here's the guideline of applying for cars whenever it comes to credit so if your credit score is above a 650 you're most likely gonna get approved for every single type of loan out there as long as you don't have any bad credit history with that credit and on top of that if you have above a 650 you're probably gonna get an interest rate of lower than 10% now on the flip side of that if you have a credit score below 650 you're probably gonna have a higher interest rate now whenever you apply for a car loan creditors are gonna be looking at your income your debt and your credit score. Now, when it comes to your income and debt, think about it like this. Think about how much monthly income you have and then subtract all your total monthly payments to see what income is available to be spent. Now, the income that you're gonna be calculating is gonna be gross. So let's use the example of the person that makes $4,000 a month working in a bank. If you have a $4,000 a month income, and let's say your mortgage or maybe your rent payment is only 1,500 bucks, minus all your other expenses like your phone, internet, cable, gas, and just general living expenses, we can average that down to around $500, that's going to leave you with an available income of around $2,000 to qualify for a car. Now granted, it doesn't mean that you're going to go out there and get a payment of $2,000 and buy a brand new Lamborghini because that's probably not realistic. But the reason why I explain it like that is because I want you to see it in the eyes the same way that the creditors view it. Now to add a little bit more color to that black and white scenario, if you do have a worse credit score than 650, you're probably going to be capped out. For example, a person with the exact same income that has a 700 credit score may get approved for $40,000 worth of a car loan and a person that has a 600 credit score may only get approved for a $25,000 car loan. And the reason for that is the total liability or risk that the creditor is willing to take out. And the last thing I want you to think about is how much can you still set aside to save every single month considering that you're going to have normal expenses like living, phone, gas, internet, everything else like that. I still want you to be able to purchase a car that you love and still set aside money in the bank every single month and also set aside money into your IRA. I don't want you to go live above your means or do anything crazy like that. So look at your overall budget and make sure that you are comfortable with throwing away a set monthly payment for this new car. So now that we got the basic information out of the way, this video is gonna be made for the masses. So I'm not counting on the viewer or you to be able to fix up the car on your own and do all those repairs. Although we will touch up on the realistic approach of buying a Mercedes BMW versus a higher end Honda. And if you made it in this video this far, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more cool videos like this. So first things first is you gotta figure out your budget. Like I mentioned earlier, you're gonna have to figure out the monthly amount that you're comfortable throwing away because cars are depreciating assets and I don't want you to bank on buying a car, paying it off over time and being able to resell it for a higher value. And the easiest way to figure this out is to Google car calculator. I personally like using the one from cars.com because you can plug in your taxes, your APR, and all the little nitty gritty details that gets you a more accurate payment estimate. Once you have an amount that you feel like you can comfortably afford, look at the total loan cost and figure out and play with the down payment to see what's the least amount of money that I can come out of pocket with to keep the payment at a reasonable rate. And what I mean by this is I want you to see the difference between putting $1,000 down in your monthly payment versus $3,000 down. If it means you're only gonna save around $40, is really coming out of pocket an extra $2,000 worth it? Or can you invest that $2,000 into something else to make you more money and help pay off that car sooner? And you need to get the financing up front. I don't want you to go to any dealership without applying for a pre-qual letter first because whenever you go to a dealer, they're going to run a ton of inquiries and it's going to severely drop your credit score. And if you're shopping around for some time, just going from dealership to dealership, they're not really going to care about your credit. They just want to get you through the door into a car so that they can meet their sale. I mean, after all, that's why they're called salesmen, right? And some of the best places you can get pre-qualified is either your local bank that you have a really good relationship with or on the flip side of that my favorite and my personal where I like to go is go to a local credit union. Credit unions tend to take on a little bit more risk even if you have a lower credit score and start developing a relationship with them as well because it's going to come in handy whenever you want to apply for future loans or lines of credit as well. So by this time you should have a budget, you should have your financial information squared away, you should have a pre-qual letter and you're ready to start shopping to get an expensive car for cheap. So this is one of the first rules to get a really expensive car for cheap. 
don't buy new. Never buy new. As soon as you purchase a new car and give it just one mile more than it had when you bought it, it's going to depreciate sometimes as much as half or 50% or more. A great example of this is my personal car. So I have a 2014 Audi S5 that I picked up for a decent deal from a dealership at $25,000. Now I bought that car last year and at the time that's a five-year-old car. But I tend to buy the car's generation right before. So if you take a look at the newer generation model Audi S5, you'll see that a lot of those cars are going for around 40 to 45,000 and even 50 plus of at that time when I purchased my car. So not even paying attention to the year at all, just by looking at the newer model Audi S5, you're gonna spend almost twice as much money to purchase that car versus just getting the generation right before. And I know a lot of you are gonna start saying, well, the miles are higher and it's not as reliable because it's gonna need some more maintenance. And that's not entirely true if you follow the next few tips. So the second tip that I wanna give you is paying attention to the brand of car that you're gonna be purchasing. There's some strategy behind me purchasing an Audi over a BMW. And I'm a huge car geek, so I love cars in general, and especially German cars. I think they're just built fantastic. But there's a reason I didn't buy a BMW, and that's because BMWs depreciate like crazy. An Audi will hold its value a little bit longer than a BMW, and because BMWs have such a bad rap in maintenance and just general ownership, I mean, I've owned so many different types of BMWs, including the newer ones and the older ones. There's just always something wrong with the car. And now, since I've been driving the Audi for over a year now, I have haven't had a single issue. So understanding what brands to stay away from is going to be essential for you to get the best deal. And if you're not a car geek, the easiest way to do research on this is to either type in the brand or model car that you want to purchase into YouTube or look it up on some of the forums. They have car forums for almost every single car out there and they will give you maintenance estimates over the course of four years of that person owning that car. So you can kind of predict the future and see what kind of maintenance you're going to have to go into. Another tip is kind of obvious, but I want you to pull the car facts. It's well worth the investment, especially for spending 20 plus thousand dollars on a car you want to make sure that you're not buying a car that has tons of rear end damage or stuff that really can't be replaced and even more important the reason why you want to pull the Carfax is to see the general maintenance ownership most people who don't have a very expensive car don't know that it comes with a very hefty maintenance bill and going to get an oil change is not going to be just fifty dollars or thirty dollars like a Honda Civic so reading through the forms and making sure that you have the maintenance done on the Carfax for example if you're gonna buy a car above fifty thousand miles make sure that certain items like the water pump like the shocks, like the brakes have been changed before so that you don't just buy that car and then have to go and get it changed yourself. And believe me, it can be confusing at first, but literally all you have to do is type into YouTube the model car that you have and someone, I promise you, somewhere has made a video of what to avoid and how to properly test drive that car so that you don't get caught up buying the car with the same mechanical mistakes as the previous person. Which kind of leads into our next topic, which is buying a car with a certain amount of miles. So depreciation is a huge factor that I focused on in this video. Video because I'm looking at the financial aspect of every single dime that I put into this car I'm not going to get back so if I'm switching cars once or twice a year I want to know that if I resell this car I'm not going to take too big of a loss so if I'm buying a newer car say 2015 2016 the generation right before then I want to make sure that I'm getting the mileage under 50,000 but I'm not getting the mileage under 20,000 for some reason and this varies model to model and brand to brand but whenever you buy a certified pre-owned car it's extra expensive and whenever you buy a car that's 20,000 miles or under it's extra expensive and there's nothing really fantastic about owning a car that has 19,000 miles versus owning a car that has 29,000 miles. There's really no difference as long as you do your due diligence. And on top of that, study your normal driving habits. If you drive around 20,000 miles a year and you purchase a car at 50,000 miles, that means whenever it comes time to sell it after three years, you're going to have over 100,000 miles on it. And that's going to severely depreciate the value. So for me, I generally put around 10 to 12,000 miles a year on my vehicle, which is pretty standard among most people. Now, because I'm a realtor, I get to write off a lot of those miles for business purposes. If I were you, I would try to set up some type of side business so that you can also take advantage of the IRS tax refund of mileage as well. And then finally, looking at the big picture overall, whenever it does come time to sell, because you're not gonna hang on to this car forever, you wanna make sure that you're gonna get the most money for it as possible. So if you have the experience, I would recommend you to sell it privately or to a local friend so that you can get the most money for it. And the goal is not to really make money on the car, it's to not lose money on the car. If you can sell it for the same loan balance, so that way all you came out of pocket to buy the car 
over the course of the time of you owning it was just the monthly payments, then that's a win-win because that's sort of like leasing a car without putting a deposit on it, without having to worry about the mileage or any upfront fees or hassles that the dealership gives you anyway. Now, if you can't do that, that's completely understandable. I wouldn't recommend you to go trade this car into any just random dealership. I would recommend you to get a CarMax estimate because one, it's free and most other dealerships are not gonna be able to beat that CarMax estimate. And if you bring that certificate with them within a certain amount of days, they will be able to match that price and work with you so that you can repeat the whole process over again and get your next luxury vehicle. Well, that's all I have for you today. If you like this video or if I taught you anything new, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel for more cool videos like this. And check out my other videos on credit and real estate.